It's that time of year again where we all make predictions that are more than likely going to be wrong, but uh, I figured I'd throw my hat into the mix with this a little bit. So I have found this on NASCAR Reddit. It's an old tier system that somebody had made uh, in the last couple days or so. User Daft the Kid. So if you go on NASCAR Reddit, make sure to give that guy some upvotes. But I figured I'd throw my hat in it. Now, I, I tried to organize these as best as I could, but basically it just is really getting all the different drivers that are either full-time or mostly full-time, putting all their numbers on the bottom here, and then putting them in five different categories of where we think they're going to be. So I figured today this would be my predictions for the year. I'm not going to go completely in-depth with everything. i got to save some stuff for the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, but I think I'll go uh, as in-depth as I can at this moment. Uh, I'm going to go a little off script from what I usually do and not have a script, just go completely off what I think. And it you know, could be a train wreck, could be fun, who knows. Let me know if you guys like these and we can see about me doing more or less of them in the future. But let's start it off. So we got the final four in the playoffs, mid-pack, okay, which is kind of like the mad drivers, the ones who, they run all the races and they run the majority of the races, but... They're nowhere near the top-funded teams by any means, or even some sometimes not even the B-level teams. And then you got the back guys, the guys that are really just, you know, there. They're in the field. You know, they're employing people, so no, no hate towards those guys. Uh, but starting off, let's just get the formality out of the way right off the bat. The, the Rick Ware guys are, are in this category. Uh, and then also I'd say Brendan Gaughan, just because he is also – part-time I think he's only doing the plate tracks you know just getting you, you know the ones that they are the you, you get them out of the way early because you know where they're going to be put on this list just based on not running too much and at the same time you know just part-time whatever it might be there you know which guys it's going to be the lower funded ones so on and so forth but I think that's let's see I think we got them all after this and, and so this leads really to the part that most people want to know. Which guys are going to be playoff caliber drivers? Which ones are going to be sort of there? Which is the mid-pack? These are the guys that they'll be in contention more than likely for a playoff berth. But at the end of the season, they're probably not going to be. And if they are, they'll probably be the ones kind of bounce first round. But again, this is why we do these predictions. We can check back both at the start of the playoffs and at the end of the year and see if I was completely wrong, which I probably am uh, make sure i put this one right here so let's see what do we got i'm gonna i'm gonna put the actually the front row cars i'm gonna put them in the okay category they had some relatively good runs last year which surprised some people but they had some top 20 speed at times sometimes it didn't work out in their favor but that's just you know that's just how it rolls uh from here all of these ones left for the most part well I, yeah, all these ones left for the most part are ones that can probably fit in that mid-pack to okay category, playoff category. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to go number by number and put them in any of these categories. I'm saving my final four picks for the end. So sorry if that's all you're wanting to see. You're going to have to wait a little bit. Kurt Busch, definitely a playoff caliber driver. Now, he definitely had a bit of a... Up, he had a big uptick compared to what Jamie McMurray was doing in that car. Him and Matt McCall had very good chemistry, and I think it's going to continue. I think he's going to do really well this coming year. Now, before I keep going on, I really just I want to say that I might have more than 16 in this category. That's where we have to choose which ones are making it, which ones are mid-pack, so on and so forth. Uh, Brad Keselowski. Keselowski is a perennial chase guy. He's going to get his wins in, and if he doesn't, he's going to be consistent enough to make it in. Austin Dillon. I think Austin Dillon is somebody who is sort of in this okay crowd that he, RCR has really fallen off uh, recently, at least in the Cup Series. And I don't think Austin Dillon by any means is a terrible driver, but at the same time, he is not the type of driver who's going to elevate bad equipment. Uh, and, and that's really what RCR and Cup is right now. It, as a Minnesota Vikings fan, it kind of reminds me a bit of, of Kirk Cousins in the sense that the talent is there, but there is not enough right there 
to elevate everyone else around him not doing well at certain points or during certain moments that the rest has to be perfect around him for him to succeed you saw this with dylan in the truck series and in the xfinity series when he was winning in there but everything had to be perfect around him sometimes there had to be less cup drivers and so on and so forth so i'm gonna put dylan in there and then I, I'm going to put his teammate actually mid-pack because I do think Tyler Reddick is a type that can raise equipment. And I think he has he has that talent, in my opinion, that, and this is no disrespect to Dylan, but I think that he is the more talented of the drivers. I don't think he is talented enough to make the playoffs with this equipment, but I think he is going to be more impressive than people are going to give him credit for. Uh, right here we got Kevin Harvick. Harvick's going to make it. He he might be on the downturn right now. SHR didn't seem too hot last year compared to how it usually is. And Harvick is not getting any younger. So he might be on the downturn, but I still think that a Harvick at 75% of his potential, which is about what he's at right now, is easily somebody who makes the playoffs. Uh, another one who I think makes the playoffs is Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has nowhere to go but up, even with Hendrick not performing at a great level. Mid-pack is where I put Newman. Newman is always pretty good in that first year or two. He can seem to be like that almost, for lack of a better word, a bad penny that just doesn't go away in the sense that he is always managing to be in contention for the playoffs, whether the equipment is there or not. But I think this time he is going to be the lesser of the two because I think Chris Busher is actually going to be a playoff level driver. I think that Busher is be I won't, better than Newman, I guess you could say. And I think that he has a lot more upside going into this year. And if they're having equal equipment, Newman made it last year. I think Newman's going to have a bit of a fall off. Again, he's another one that's not getting any younger. Busher, on the other hand, doesn't have that problem. I think that he will take his teammates' place this year. Ty Dillon, I'm going to put him in the same category as his brother. Virtually the same reasons, except that I do think that the Jermaine team, is, even if it's connected at the hip with RCR, is still just a half step behind. So if the 3 isn't making it, if the 8 isn't making it, the 13 certainly is not making it. Kyle Busch do i even have to say he's gonna make the playoffs this year uh same goes for truex even without cole pern he's still a talented driver a jgr driver and he's gonna have the support of the team around him i don't think he's gonna fall off and be like the worst driver in the field like a lot of people are thinking a lot of people are thinking he's gonna be like jimmy johnson has been over the last two years no but truex again getting a little older but at the same time he still has he has a few good years left in him for sure i think eric jones will make it i think he's somebody who can get a win or two in there so he'll definitely have that uh playoff spot locked pretty well joey logano again he's just like kyle bush he's gonna make it he's got that the, he's got the talent he's got the upside the, i think the crew chief changes is going to reinvigorate the entire Penske racing team which is why I think that his teammate Ryan Blaney will also be in and I think he'll have a breakout season uh this year I think the crew chief change is going to be beneficial for him I think it's going to be beneficial for Penske as a whole especially at the later half of the year Bubba Wallace Bubba Wallace is somebody who I want him to be in that mid-pack I want him to be up here but I don't think Petty has it right now I think that they're going to be a little bit better it sounds like they have secure sponsorship going into this year but, again, they're very old school, so things could fall through. You don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't see uh, a petty team being even close to the playoffs unless he wins a race at Daytona or Talladega. But I think that even at those tracks, he's a pretty big long shot. So, another one I think is actually a lock that people are overlooking is my friend Danny B's favorite guy, Alex Bowman. Bowman right now, he is he's somebody who I think can surprise a lot of people. I think Hendrick as a whole can surprise a lot of people. I'm putting Byron up here as well for that reason. Both of these drivers are very young. Both of them have shown a lot of improvement over the last year. And I think that both of them are going to benefit from the changes in the playoffs and, and really excel once they get to that point. Corey LaJoy, 
is somebody who before his team a few years ago going to be one of these back of the pack guys last year i'd say in the okay category but i think with the merge or sort of partnership with shr i think that Corey lajoy is going to be one of those guys on the edge of the playoffs and in that playoff bubble i think he's going to have a similar season to someone say like matt de benedetto had last year at the start of the season he's going to be off a little bit i don't think that he's going to set the world on fire from the start i don't think he's going to be even that much better than he was last year from the start. But I will say, Corey LaJoy has wheeled that car up without that added effect of SHR being partnered with him to a place that I don't think 32 at certain times during the year should have been running. I think he's a driver who really does elevate his equipment. I think he is incredibly underrated. And I think that he is going to be somebody who's going to turn a few heads, especially towards the end of the year. And I hope, 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 that that means that he'll get more opportunities come 2021, or that 32 team will get more opportunities in 2021 with the joy. All right, Denny Hamlin, I don't know why I haven't put him up here yet. He's an obvious playoff guy. So let me let me count real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think I count that right. 13, right? 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, 13. So we got 13 guys in the playoffs right now. And down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine guys for three spots. Let me get this right out of the way right now. I don't think any JTG team is going to even be close to mid pack. I think that uh, Priest doesn't have what it's take, uh, doesn't have what it takes to go up, even at that 37 team. Even if it's, I, I, I haven't been following, but I'm, even if it's just switching numbers or teams all together, I don't think he's going to be elevating that team higher, and I don't think Stenhouse will either. So get those guys out. you got seven guys left here. you got Eric Almarola, Clint Boyer, Matt Benedetto, Cole Custer, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, Christopher Bell. Well, I'm putting Kyle Larson up here. I think he's going to have a bounce back year in 2020. I think that he's going to have – at the end of the year, I believe the last – 14 races he had 10 top 10s and I don't think that that is just going to go away going into this new year yes they've changed up the shorter track package altogether for the most part and really put it in the driver's hands but I think that really benefits Larson if you ask me so I think Larson's going to make it so we have six spots for two guys and again Almarola, Boyer, DiBenedetto, Cole Custer, Jimmy Johnson and Christopher Bell it amazes me. I never would have thought three years ago that we'd be putting Jimmy Johnson as somebody who may or may not make the playoffs. So, who do I think is not going to make it out of these ones? Clint Boyer. Boyer has been falling off. I don't understand why people think he's a perennial favorite to make the playoffs and go far in them. He's not shown anything really that spectacular for a while now. And again, getting older. That's It's a theme with a lot of these guys. He is getting older and I, I just I don't think he's going to. So I also think that part of that is SHR going down, and that's why I'm not putting Eric Almarola in the playoffs this year. I think he'll be close. I think that he'll have maybe a last ditch effort. And again, I could be wrong, but I, I just don't see it from this team. I don't see it from SHR as a whole. So I don't think he makes it this year. So two spots, four guys. It's Benedetto who's partnered with Penske, Cole Custer, that's at SHR, Jimmy Johnson, of course, Hendrick Motorsports in his swan song year, and Cole or uh, Christopher Bell. I'm just going to be straight up with you right now. Christopher Bell, I think, is making it. That 95 team was very strong at the end of the year with Matt Benedetto. You saw it at Bristol. You saw it at a few other tracks. And I think that being closer to JGR than they were last year, Really, just being that fifth JGR car is going to pay a ton for Bell. I think he'll get a win or two this year. I'll be honest with you. I think of, of the guys coming up right now, the rookies, Christopher Bell, Cole Custer, and Tyler Reddick are all extremely talented. The deal right now is that Christopher Bell is the only one that's in the best equipment in the sport right now. And I think that puts him over the edge. I think that it puts him actually pretty close, if not above, Eric Jones and getting that driver of the 20 car sweating. 
Matt Benedetto, I want him to make it. He is one of my favorite guys. I root for him each week. I don't think he's gonna. I really don't. I think that he. I. I don't have enough yet to say that he can put together a consistent full season, or at least a consistent full regular season. Those first twenty six races, he is very good at spiking up at certain times. I mean, he would put a BK Racing car in the top ten, fighting for a top five back in twenty sixteen. He was putting a car that was with Levine Family Racing last year, which, by the way, wasn't as closely connected throughout the year with JGR as many want to say. And I think that a lot of people rip on him for this. And I just I, I don't think he makes it. I even though he has that talent and that ability to to spike up at certain times, I don't think that there's enough yet in his resume in the cup series to show that he can put that all together. I would love to be proven wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong because I think Matt De Benedetto in the playoffs is a great thing for NASCAR. He adds that bit of emotion that, that just, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's what the fans love in a driver. That genuineness, I guess is, is what it is. I just, I don't see it yet. I hope so though. And I, and if I'm proven wrong, I will gladly say it as loud and proud as possible. So this leaves two guys left. You've got the rookie in Cole Custer, and you've got Jimmy Johnson in his retirement tour. Now, the last the, the, the way the last couple of years have gone, you think there's a certain way I'm gonna pick this. You'd think this is a no-brainer. But man, I think Jimmy has one lit win one win left in him. I think that Jimmy Johnson is going to be that 16th and final guy in the playoffs this year. I think that they're going to get just enough consistency under him and not as much bad luck as he had last year to, to get him up there. And I think Jimmy Johnson will make the playoffs in his last year. Do I think he'll be a championship contender? Hell no. No. He is not going to be contending for an eighth championship past the third week of the playoffs, but he'll make it. It'll be a nice story. It won't be a complete failure of a final season. So now, the moment a lot of you probably have been waiting for, if you haven't skipped ahead already, my picks for the final four. Now, I thought long and hard about it. I looked at the schedule, and I think there's going to be a bit of shakeup and a bit of consistency with the past few years. So I'm just going to be real with you. Kyle Busch is the best driver in NASCAR right now. He's going to make the Final Four. He's going to be in contention for the championship at Phoenix this year. Whether he wins or not, I don't know. Another guy who I think is still really good, his teammate, Denny Hamlin. I think that Hamlin is going to make the the, uh, playoffs. Obviously, he'll make the playoffs, but he'll make the Final Four as well. Does he avenge that championship loss last year? I don't know. He was pretty damn good this past year at phoenix so he's gonna he's definitely gonna be up there for sure now this leaves a couple others now you know what i said about jimmy johnson i think alex bowman is a very very dark horse pick that people are overlooking especially with the schedule changes i think they go in his favor joey logano i think the new crew chief still penske's gonna do well same with ryan blaney kevin harvick always up there I think Chase Elliott's always up there. You look, and and Kyle Larson is immensely talented. He could do it. Kozlowski, Kurt Busch. I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. I think Chase Elliott's going to make the Final Four. I think that these schedule changes they've had really help him a lot. A lot of the changes that have been moved into the playoffs are tracks that he is strong at, or at least types of tracks he's strong at. And I think that Hendrick is going to start pulling it together a little more. Do I think they're going to return to the level they were at in 2014 or 2015 or 2007? No, no, they're not going to be the top team in the sport. That's Joe Gibbs teams. Uh, That's Joe Gibbs racings, Joe Gibbs racings, spot and it's going to be probably for the foreseeable future but i do think that a hendrick motorsports that can get to the top two or three of teams maybe top even top four or so with chase elliott as their driver 
is a threat for the championship. And with it being at Phoenix, if he can get a little luck on his side, he could very well be the first driver since his father that's the most popular driver in Cup winning the Cup Series championship. Now this leaves one more. And I, I talked about this guy earlier. I t- I'd said that he's a threat. He's, he is incredibly talented. He's been getting a lot of flack from people. Uh, some warranted, some unwarranted. I think he shuts these people up this year. I think the schedule changes help this guy out. Kyle Larson is my other pick for the Final Four. And I think that this is very ironic, seeing the fact that, well, it's the first year that Homestead, at least in Kyle Larson's career, first year Homestead isn't the finale. Which, you know that it, when that was announced, Larson had to be like, are you serious? Seriously. But I think that he's going to be up there. And I think all four of these drivers are going to be very strong uh, if they make the Final Four. My championship pick, like I said, got to watch the NASCAR Weekly Podcast this year for that one. I'm not spoiling that here. But I want to leave this to you. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description below so you can make your own tiers. And, you know, my Twitter is in the description. It's right there. You can tag me on Twitter. Uh, You can show me what your tiers look like. You can tweet it. I think that there's an option for it on here. Yeah, Uh, and here's the guy who made it. So, you know, be sure to thank him. But uh, that's that's about it. All we can do at this point now is wait and see what the performance is. Uh, But until then, these are just my predictions for it. So... Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm sorry. I, again, doing this completely off script, just spur of the moment. But it's it's fun, really. You know, I've rambled on here now for over 20 minutes. So, with that, be sure, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, have a good one.